Hello, 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 beautiful people. OMG. <clears throat> apologies, apologies, apologies. I am running late today on our usual live, man. Oh gosh. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to Fit, Strong and Flexible group here on Facebook and our live hump day. Okay. So guys, this is Carla Armo, your girl coming at you. A mindset, movement, coach and mentor, I'm a creative person, experiential stuff is all up my street and I just love coming on here and sharing any um, morsels that I can with you guys and also the feedback I'm getting is fantastic. Some people are getting out there and sticking to their targets, nudging their targets ahead of them. <clears throat> I have to um, apologize that I'm a little bit sniffly because I'm telling you why I'm late, first of all. It's because I was working on a little project and I my run got a little later and a little later. So I did have to slip out from, slip out from my run before this. And it's quite cold outside because I'm here in England and um, it is quite cold out there. So I got a little sniffy while I was out. But listen, let's move right along. I want to say a big morning shout out to all you beautiful people in my homeland, Dominica. Oh my good gosh. For any of you guys that are on this group, even if you're not listening right now, <clears throat> you're not live, but you are on the group and you see this video, just go out and look up World Creole Music Festival in the Nature Island of the Caribbean. This festival that was there this week, last weekend, and I missed it. Oh my gosh. Um, it just looked so fabulous. And what I have to express is just how gorgeous everybody was looking there. Everybody was just so beautifully turned out, looking fit, strong, flexible, and sexy like hell. Jeez, man, you ladies were rocking it. And guess what? The men up there were really rocking it too. <laughs> I feel so bad that I wasn't there. So that brings me to the topic. For those of you on here, because we're getting more people joining our group that are friends of friends and friends of contacts and friends of our network that may not know who I am. And I just come on every day talking, talking, talking and not really saying anything about me. So yes, I am from the Caribbean island of Dominica. That's the land of my birth. Dominica, large and in charge, always will be. And for those of you who don't know, that is the Commonwealth of Dominica, La Dominique, in between Martinique and Guadeloupe, not the Dominican Republic. Yeah, no, speak Spanish. I speak English. Okay, so we have former um, Commonwealth, we're Commonwealth because we're former British. So, I am based here in the south of England, um, in Brighton and Hove. I'm in Hove, actually. And so I'm just near the sea, which is great because I love to run there. And I'm not far from the Downs either, so I can also run some hills when I want to. So yes, so that goes to show that I am a little bit of a runner as well. Um, I'm really thinking, guys, should I sign up for the Brighton Half Marathon? Did it a couple times and I'm thinking maybe I should give myself a target. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. Before, oh gosh, another before. I just wanted to also give a massive shout out. Okay, guys? Massive shout out to our Dominican powerhouse badass woman, Hazel Schillingford Ricketts. God, I, I'm going to get all teary here today because I am just so proud. She was meeting the queen yesterday. Because of all of her work she's been doing in helping people with their vision, their sight. And I don't want to say the word and make it all wrong, but I will be posting something about her because the ophthalmology, but she's working with um, reticular, something about the, okay, listen to me, I'm not good with these medical words, especially to come with your vision. I really must get good though. But basically she's been working and one of the people spearheading in the region, working to find ways to help people that get, um, vision loss because of diabetes she's been working for decades in dominica when she retired recently no one would think she's retirement age but when she retired recently she was the only one working in dominica only specialties working in dominica so really hazel has given decades of her life um for the work both she and her late husband and she's just such a powerhouse such a bloody badass man i just have to shout out hazel and just say congrats and to her kids too that are just fabulous as well they like my kids because I love them just like mine because they just, especially my little um, Jessica, <laughs> okay, who's not on this chat because she's not over 50. Okay, so what I want to just say, um, drop that out there. I also wanted to touch on the concept of diabetes and 
our well-being and our self our well care our self care morning esther and our own self care and on our own self um gaining a little bit of our self um awareness and self love you know because so often we do as i said before we do so much for other people and we put ourselves last so i just wanted to touch on that having read about hazel this morning and yesterday as well last night um i just wanted to say to us how important it is to be able to take care of ourselves so that we can be it's not a selfish thing to love yourself to appreciate yourself to respect yourself to put yourself first and at the center in the sense that you have to take care of your well-being before you can be well enough to take care of others it's not a selfish thing it's a self-aware thing you know and um it's common a lot of women do that a lot of women that i speak to a lot of my clients you know, they always hear them. They put everybody else before them. So I just wanted to say that about sticking to our habits, sticking to our schedules, sticking to our rituals, sticking to our our um, goals that we say we're going to do and are we doing them, okay? So I've been asking people to post on here if they are following their, their schedules, following their rituals, their routines. Let me just see Esther is saying, bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. C'est Creole, c'est men. <laughs> it's Creole week last week in Dominica and we're coming up to our independence. So there is, um, 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 I don't know why I'm getting, uh, so there is, um, Esther in her Creole outfit saying hello. So yes, so what I'm just talking about here was about routines and things. So I was actually wanted to talk a little bit about routines and sticking to our plan and stuff like that, which is really important for us to do. So basically, um, I'm listening while I was running today. I've been listening to that book for a little while. Uh, Atomic Habits by James Clare. And it would be interesting for you guys to look it up. I find that that app Audible on my phone is a godsend because I, there's so many books I want to read and there is no way in God's earth that I will ever get through all of them. So I have some that I dip into, you know, talking about habits. I have a couple on the back of my toilet. I have a couple on the shelf above the toilet. I have a couple on the bedside. I have a couple in the living room and I have you know, some smaller ones that in the car. So I always have access to something to do a chapter. And I always have my little post-it notes to mark something, make a little note so that I can catch back up where I was, what I was thinking about it. But the one I'm actually going through right now physically is my book of joy. And on my Audible, I'm going through the Atomic Habits. Now, I wanted to um, <clears throat> make a mention of that because I wanted to go through the rules, the four rules of God setting habits. But before I do that, I just wanted to make sure I touched a little bit on the exercises that I was um, posting on the, um, on the group. I posted one for back work recently and I posted one for the saw and I posted about the rolling and the roll ups. So Right there in the exercises, and I think yesterday I posted the side lying series. So if you notice, I have posted exercises that touch on um, from standing to going down. I showed you some work where you're standing and you could do work while you're standing. Your leg raises can be done to the side. You can do your roll down from, the, um, from your um, standing position. You can do a lot of them from seated um so good morning 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 um and you can do those on your going down onto your hands and knees seated on the mat also lying down on your back lying on your front lying on your side okay guys so we really have a full workout if you just go to where it says photos on the group here and you press on the first video or any video you want and then you can just let it auto play you can actually have a whole sequence of videos um available to you i will post that on the group so that other people can understand what i'm talking about because a couple of people have asked me oh gosh i was trying to find the videos so i will point out where to find the videos it's in the same spaces where it says photos and i'm I've, um, I will 
make a note on that on the group. So I'm just talking about here, looking on the group, finding the videos within the photos um, folder, you know, they have the tabs across the top. Um, you can do the videos one after the other. I've given you quite a few now and there's at least two hours of videos on there now. So you, listen, you don't need to do two hours of, of, of exercising. You can literally do 15 to 20 minutes and that would be a good workout. Because the key about Pilates is that you do it and you keep that throughout the day, the feeling of how you've connected with your bodies. Okay, it's very important. So you don't have to put aside an hour if you don't have it, okay? Because obviously you would like to do some cardiovascular work as well, maybe some brisk walking, some cycling, some running. Maybe you go into the gym and you do something on the equipment there. That's fantastic to do. But there are exercises there that do a lot of full body strengthening and flexibility work on our group chat. Okay, guys, so I really encourage you all to keep looking at the exercises, even if you just have them in the background so you can understand what I'm telling you. And then when you go to do it, you would understand even better how to do it. I'm also going to post a few more until the 1st of November. And then what I'm going to do in November, I am going to try to do very short ones because I would like to see if we can all build up together and be a practice of just at least doing eight minutes of Pilates every day. But I'll be posting a lot more about that in the next coming days. It's coming to the end of the month. So I can't believe I started this in October. I said, okay, I'm going to do the month of October do this group and try to do my hump day live and put exercises at least two three four exercises a week i would try to to do five a week it's not as easy as um as you know you see those people on facebook you see the people that are just these these influencers and i take my hat off to them you know because um I'm, it's 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 a job for sure and obviously when you have other work with with people to do you with um with people one-to-one -one and um, other projects going on, it's not as, as easy. So I really take my hat off to those people that are, are keeping it up. And so I've been trying to do that with you guys, give you all some work to do, some exercises. I want to do a little work, some play, <laughs> because I love doing it. I, I, you know, I get such a kick of doing these exercises for you guys. I hope you all are recognizing that, because it's really quite a kick. Okay, so let's take a little breather here. For those of you live on with me, let me see who else is on with me. Okay, Ruslan, how are you, sweetie pie? I have been pinked. Have you been pinked, Ruslan? How are you doing, babes? Okay, bonjour, bonjour. Nice to have you with me, waving at you. Okay, so I'm just going to let you all know that my boys are coming home because my boys are home um, today, half term. And well, that's my husband and my son, half term. And my husband usually works from home on a Wednesday. So I usually kick him out of the living room so I can do this here. But anyway, they've just come home to, from doing some stuff. So that you heard a little noise in the background. But yes, let's take a deep breath. Let's get ourselves focused because this is something that I did on the um, one of the exercises. The first exercises we did. We took a nice deep breath in through the nose, into the ribs, and then come apart, and then just exhale. And if sometimes you're feeling that you're just feeling a little bit tense, just do that nice, slow, deep breath. It really works with the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system to calm the body, to get you focused into one space and just become more aware and focused. So let's just focus now because I'm going to go on to another topic. And this topic just very quickly is about habits. Okay, guys, because I hear so much, so much, so much about saying, yes, you know, I can never fit it in. I can never fit it in. And I was talking about the book that I was reading, Atomic Habits. So I'm just going to quickly pick up my iPad. Sorry about this glasses on, glasses off thing, guys. But you know, when you get to our age over 50, you, <laughs> you got to do it. You know what it is. <laughs> you just got to do it, right? So, yes. So I was saying there were, he has four sort of laws of behavior change. And he, and then he sets these um 
four simple rules that you can um, use to build better habits. And you know something, I have used these rules for years because they are common sense and then now they're being written about. I, um, they've been written about a while and I, I actually picked up similar things in another book that I was reading about habits, just habits. And um, the first one, the first habit is to make it obvious. The second one is making it attractive. The third one is make it easy. And the fourth rule is make it satisfying. And in his book, so I will also post on our um, group. I'm giving myself a lot of work. <laughs> but guys, for you guys, it's worth it. Because you know the main thing is that even if I see one person, this is helping. You don't know how good that makes me feel. I just feel, yes, result. Because it's so important for me to share what um, I have stuck in here for years. I'm going to talk about these habits. But you know, for years, I've always said, people say, you know, Carla, how do you keep your, your you know, you keep the same um, size, you don't gain weight. I mean, obviously, you gain weight every now and then. You gain a few ounces, gain a few pounds. Depending on the season, you, you know, you, you break your, not your habit, but your lifestyle because you are out in, a, in an environment that is not conducive to you keeping it up, you know. And, um, but then you, you redirect your path. It's like you're at a ship or you're flying a plane. And you're going off course. You can't just keep going off course. You've got to refocus, reposition um, yourself, you know. And I've always said, when I was in studying um, art and design at Parsons in New York City, I was introduced to all of these fancy clothing, obviously, because I was, I was majoring in fashion. And I, at the time, was wearing a size 4, between size 2 and size 4, because I'm a petite person, obviously. And nobody, not everybody has to be wearing the same size, obviously. But if that's your ideal size, you don't change it. And I, from the time I'm 17, I have not purchased clothes a different size. Obviously, if it's a British sizing, it's a different size number, but it's the same size in reference. And what is my rule is that I just will not buy clothing that is not my size. Now, if I go to Gap you find that they cut the clothes now bigger. So the normal size four at Gap for me is a size zero or two. So I know that when I put on the size four, it's too big. I said, look. And so you have to, all of you guys out there, one of the things to make a habit, to make it easy, get a nice piece of clothing that you really love and that you look really fabulous in, or you looked in at your, fa at your ideal weight and make it a, a pact that you try it on, like say every three months, you know? I do that with my wedding dress. I try in my wedding dress every anniversary so that it always fits me. Okay, so I did that with my first wedding dress. <laughs> I do that with my next wedding dress so that I know that that was my weight when I got married. If you were not at your ideal weight when you got married, obviously that's not going to work for you. But this is something, one of the things that is a sort of a tool that he talks about, James Clare talks about, as in having a habit that you can make it related to something, that you can... Um, have something, this is number four, that makes it satisfying. So I know that my habit of eating well, keeping my weight down, exercising to keep my, keep trim and in shape, that how can I measure that to make sure that I have a sort of a, of, a, of an accomplishment and something that I can tick off, something I can say, yes, I have lived up to what I said I was going to do. That's one thing. Having a couple of pieces of clothing that you know you look fabulous in, that you can try on and say yes, I'm keeping up my um, weight or I'm keeping up my um, exercise because the scale can move but it's how you feel in your body and how your clothes fit you is when you know you feel good and you feel agile and you feel full of energy okay so I'm not just because every body and that is a beauty about the work that I do I work with people physically and I have been working since the early 80s with people with aerobics with step aerobics with um um all kind of exercise. I mean, my first certification was a Pineapple Dance Center in 1988. 88, yes, I did my course at Pineapple in London. And I was teaching from before that at Dominica Club in Dominica. And then after that, I have, I mean, I have taught exercise for years. And now I specialize in Pilates and I have been for 15 years now teaching Pilates and um, working with people's bodies. But the beauty about that is that every body 
is unique. And it just gives me such pleasure to see me teach the same exercise to a group of people. And each person will move with their own rhythm, with their own speed, with their own length, with their own um, um, space in their own way and each time it's so beautiful i mean it just sometimes i'm teaching them and i just i have to sort of i'm so mushy you know i have to think geez this people so gorgeous because they're trying so deeply they're moving so deeply and so beautifully and um it really is it's a beauty beautiful thing to watch so when i say something about being a certain weight and fitting into certain size clothing of course i respect that every human is different and unique and that's what makes us beautiful so I don't want people to take it out of context at all. That's what I was just making a point to say that. So just coming back to the habits thing that I was mentioning about um, the book that I'm reading and James Clay's who I'm quoting Atomic Habits. And it says, make it obvious. So for instance, going exercising, okay, or eating well. Don't be putting your vegetables and your fruits away at the back of the cupboard, back of the sink. What am I talking sink? Of the, of the fridge or a place where you can't reach it. Why don't you put your fruits out on the dining room table? Make a beautiful bouquet. We always, we always have flowers in our um, homes. Many of us, we put a bouquet of flowers. I feel it's more important that I put a bouquet of fruits on my dining table. So when you pass it, you know sometimes you fix your flowers. Of course, I love flowers as well. You fix your flowers when you're passing. Why not pick up a fruit and eat something? Or you have some carrots. You have some um, um, grapes, you have some um, celery, you have broccoli. Why don't they have nice washed fresh and in a nice bowl in the fridge covered with clear, clear something clear? Or you have those cloths now that you wear with beeswax that you can put on them as pretty fabric. So every time you open the fridge, the first thing that's popping in front of you is something nourishing, something healthy, something that's not fattening, something that's full of fiber and good for you. Okay, make it obvious, make it easy so that you can do it easily put your exercise clothes out in front of you so the first thing you do when you wake up you see them there you live up to your exercise routine okay make it attractive what do i get if i eat that what do i get if i eat this fruit or this vegetable i feel fresh my mouth is feels clean i feel like i've done something good for my body i have nice bowel movements you have to think about those things too because if you're cleaning out yourself, you're clean inside, you're cleaner outside, right? People don't like to talk about these things. But I tell you something, I love to talk about my bowel movements and my inside-outside cleaning business. I love it. It's important. Make it easy. Don't, you know, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. People have all these highfalutin plans. But make it easy, guys. Make it easy, people. Do, do the bare minimum. Get up and get up five times. If you do that five times during the day, that'll be 25 squats you've done. Make it simple and easy. Make it that you can just access it and do it. If it's walk, you're going to walk. Just park your car a little bit further and add that to your routine. And then as you get more stronger and then you build time and you're more efficient, then you can make more time to maybe go exercise in two, three mornings a week as well. You know, but sometimes if you're starting a habit, you put you set yourself up for failure because it's too big of a goal. So it's okay. Give yourself a break, man. Just love yourself. Just just appreciate yourself and say, you know, I, I, I'm gonna rock this thing. <laughs> you don't have to try to overdo everything, you know. So he says, make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, and make it satisfying. Another thing about making it attractive is what am I going to gain from doing this? Okay, can we think about it? What are we gaining from doing what we say we're going to do? Then if you know that that is a habit, okay, saving money. Are we putting that money into an account that maybe we put um, a direct debit? Say for instance, he talks in his book about Netflix or some sort of subscription you may have that you hardly ever use. Take that money and put it as a direct debit into a savings account and put an alert on that account. So every time money pops into that account, good morning, people, good morning, good morning. Every time money goes into that account, you are getting an alert saying, look, you're saving some money. It could be something as simple as that, trying to put money towards something that you want to do, to buy a nice pair of shoes or to do an experience, go traveling or something. But make your habits feel that you are that you are gaining something from it. There's something attractive 
about sticking to that plan, you know? And the, way, the reason I started talking about this is A, because I was listening to my book Atomic Habits by James Clay while I was running this morning. And B, I was giving a big shout out to our, um, to my fellow Dominique and Hazel Schillingford Ricketts who was just meeting the Queen yesterday and being um, recognized for her work with, um, as she's an ophthalmologist that, listen to me, she's an eye specialist surgeon, all sorts of things. I don't even want to start saying and say the wrong thing about Hazel because she's just one badass woman. I'm sorry for you all that are offended by that, but I can tell you something. There is no other way to explain what kind of phenomenal woman this woman is. Okay, so I'm just saying I was giving her a shout out and she's been t doing a special project about helping people to save their vision because of the effects from diabetes. Okay, and diabetes is caused sometimes by foods we eat. So we have to be aware of making sure we're having <clears throat> healthy diets and healthy lifestyles to make sure that we don't have the other effects that can come about. And that's what I was talking about. So guys, <clears throat> let me see what time it is. It's 12.04. I did come on late. I apologize. So I'm now I've been on longer than normally my little 20 minute thing. Um, usually I do stay a little bit longer. So I'm going to leave you guys soon. But I just want to make a quick recap. To always, guys, take a deep breath. <sighs> Get yourself centered. Okay, think about your breath being very important. <clears throat> Connecting with your core, your core values, your core beliefs, your core vision for your life, but also your core of your body that you're moving from a strong center, which is where the whole concept of being fit, strong, and flexible comes from. Okay, fit that we are fit for purpose, physically, emotionally, intellectually, <clears throat> and technically, that we are strong. We have built that strength and stamina, no matter what gets thrown at us. We are strong, okay? Fit for purpose, we're doing what is according to our plan, our vision, our chosen legacy. Strong that we have prepared ourselves to deal with that task. Flexible for me is so important that we are resilient. We are adaptable. We can stretch to fit the size of the task. You have no idea how passionate I am about this concept of being fit, strong and flexible, ladies and gentlemen who are listening on here. Okay, so... I just want to say thank you for listening. Check on your habits. I'm going to post this so that it can be listened to again. Go through the exercises. I'm going to load a few more before the end of the month. I have a couple of days to come. So go through the exercises under the photos um, little tab. And you'll see all the videos that I've loaded on there. And, you know, think of yourself living from your self-awareness and your self-integrity and living to your habits, sticking to your habits and your routines and just loving yourself, self-compassionate and self-love. That's what I preach so that we are there for the others who need us. We are there when those who need us to love them, need us to protect them, to support them. We are strong from within and we can be the best for others and for ourselves, right? So guys, stay healthy. For those of you who came out and joined me today live, thank you so much. Um, for those of you who will be listening on, I am Carla Armour. <clears throat> and um, this is my little group, Fit, Strong and Flexible Over 50. And you don't have to be over 50 to join the group because you have to be fit, strong and flexible before you get to 50 to be fit, strong and flexible after 50. Ideally, but it's never too late to start and to try. Okay, so guys, thank you so much. It's been real. I'll probably come on again at the end of the month just to make sure everybody has their videos, looking at the videos. And I'll be posting a nice challenge in November. So this is our last hump day live on Facebook with me in our group. And I'll be sending out some new challenges. And actually, I'll be um, putting a heads up for a quest that I'll be running. But I'll tell you guys more about that on the next video that I load up. All right. So guys, thank you so much. It's been real. And... Um, Esther, thank you as well. Good, you're off to Pilates exercises soon. Fantastic. 
Fantastic. Have a great day, okay, guys? Have a great day and a great productive rest of the week, okay? Love you guys. Kisses, 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 you beautiful people. Stay beautiful. Stay fit, strong, and flexible, okay? Enjoy your week.